Hello and welcome back to the ninth and last episode of the automated special series that is focusing on SAP automation and integration with Power Automate. So in this last episode, I'll show you how to develop an SAP Fiori based automation leveraging Power Automate desktop. This will cover advanced web automation techniques to support dynamic selectors and also manage exceptions. So in the last three episodes, we were looking into pro-code, no-code and low-code options for SAP GUI-based automation. In this episode, and the last one in this series, we'll look into SAP Fiori automation, which is based on web technologies. So for that, of course, I have another boilerplate template that allows me to reutilize a login sequence, log-off sequence, and have a base structure for exception handling as well. So let's get started. Here we have the same structure as with the other boilerplate templates that we have a main exception block that will handle all exceptions which might be happening in these uh, subflows here. And in case of an exception, it will run that subflow, which is called exception handler, that simply gets the last error, assigns it to our variable and stops the flow with the error message uh, retrieved from the last error. Then we have these three subflows, the first one for logging on to SAP Fiori. You see here it's calling the SAP Fiori launchpad of that ES5 demo system and then populating the username, password and clicking on the login button. Once this has been done, it waits for a specific content because it, depending on the load and depending on latency, it might take some time for that web page to be loaded. Then we have here the main processing part, which is this time web UI processing. And then at the end, we are just logging off by clicking on the user icon on the right upper part and then pressing uh, log off. So let's review the process as we would uh, do it manually to see what we have to automate in Power Automate Desktop. This is the ES5 demo system login screen. Here we log in. Then we open the Fiori app for managing uh, products. Select the supplier. Let's say famous US uh, LV. Then we press search, select that record, click on go to list these products per supplier. And then we export that and uh, insert the records we have extracted from that uh, table here into an Excel spreadsheet. We sign out from, uh, from SAP wait until the goodbye text is appearing and then we close all the windows and return to Power Automate Desktop. So let's get to this initial stage once we have logged in. For that we can disable log off for now. So we'll go to our EPM Enterprise Procurement uh, Model Product Manage page. This is then here in, in that list. And from here on, we can now start doing the navigational parts to extract the products for a specific supplier. So let's go back to Power Automate Desktop. So here we will concentrate now on the web UI processing part. We can rename this. We can say this is the search for product by supplier. So the first change I want to do is in the SAP logon sequence where I wait for a specific element to appear on the page. This tells me that the page has been loaded properly and I can proceed with the automation. So in this boilerplate, I had a approve button I was waiting for and this has of course now to change. And we will select our uh, go button actually of that uh, EPM product page. So let me select that. We can use either the price range or any other content control which should then be visible. So I've captured two of them. Let's just uh, remove the first one, which was that uh, diff element, and we use only the uh, button. Now, once we are on that product search page, the first thing we need to do is a click uh, link on web page. And here we can select either UI element. If it's not there, we have to add it, like in our case. So we start by capturing that lookup button for the supplier. And we can continue to capture controls without going back and forth. The next one would be that uh, search field. Then we type our search term. Click on that, capture that uh, search button. Capture the checkbox. Also the select. Click on the select. Capture the go button. 
and you will see there is a second uh, content uh, too because we have captured that uh, go button before when we waited for that element so we can remove this in a second let's go to our uh, second control here which was the supplier button and we select that and now let's test it quickly perfect so it has waited until this was visible and then went ahead and pressed on that button now we don't have always to re-log in uh, from from scratch we can have a optimization here during development we can go here and then say launch chrome put this first and this time not a new instance but attached to an existing one by title and here we have our managed products and this will produce a browser to variable we can rename this actually to browser and then here again link on web page this will go to that browser session we have here now so the next step was let me actually copy that next step is to click on that search field this was i think the input search and then also a populate text on web page and here again we select our search input and we can define our variable that will hold our supplier name let's call it supplier name and instead of hard coding that value we can put here the variable name good the next thing will be to click on that uh, search icon so let's head over to the UI elements and then we first rename all the controls because they have uh, some very cryptic uh, names in here so we can identify them later better in our automation this we can also rename this is the select button and the last one we can delete because we have this already captured as part of our wait on content on web page. Good. So the next step will be to click on that search icon. Let me copy and paste this. Now let's open that action. And here we select our search button. Okay. And since the uh, loading of the list might take a second or two, we can put a wait action in between. Let's wait here for a duration of uh, two seconds. Perfect. And then we can send a, a key, a, a top key actually, to go to the first found entry in that uh, list. And then select that checkbox through a, another send key command for, for space. So let's put the send keys in here. And we can insert special keys. You can uh, just select from that list here, MISC, and then we need the tab. Okay. Let's add another special key with the send keys command. This time we select, remove this, and we select the space. Okay. Once this is done, we have another click link on web page. So let me copy that. This time we want to click on the select button. So let me open that. And here we select the select button. Okay. Let's copy the click link on web page action. And here we point to our go button. And save. Let's also save the flow and then we can test it. It launches the web page, then logs into SAP. And here it waits now until the go button is present in that uh, page. Then clicks on the supplier lookup, provides the supplier name tabs and selects the first uh, item hits on go and then waits until the product list is appearing here for that supplier once this is done it logs out of sap waits for that uh, text to appear and then closes all browser windows so this has worked if we look here at our product list we have, as expected, our 20 products in here with all the columns which are required to save now in our Excel spreadsheet. 
Good, let's make another uh, subflow here, which is actually processing that data table and uh, adding those rows into an Excel spreadsheet. We start with an Excel function, which is uh, launch Excel. Open an existing document. Let me actually open that. Make sure I have removed all the rows here already. Let me save that. Here's our document. You can also navigate through that button here. Make instance visible, yes, an Excel instance looks good. Now I will set an index variable here so we know which row we are always in the iteration. Set variable. We call this uh, row index and we initialize it with two because we will be in the second row, right? So the first one is the header columns and then the, the data starts in the second row. Now, here we need to do a for each so that we can iterate through all the products in our product list for each. We point our variable. It was uh, product list, the data table. And each uh, item will be then the current item here. So let me use a write to Excel command. Value to write will be our current item. And then within those uh, percentage uh, signs, we can reference the column name or the column uh, ID with either an integer or with its name. So I will do that here with an integer. This integer here and that index is zero based. That means the first column is in column zero, the second in one and so on. So I would like to get to the fourth column in that data table, which is then our product. And this, the fourth column is the index three because it's zero based. Then we have here the column A and row is of course our row index, which should be two the first time we iterate through that. So this will write the product into the first column and the first free row. Control C, Control V, we do this uh, another five times for the other data. Okay, we have six columns we would like to write. And then once the first iteration is through, I would like to increment that row index by one. So the next time it goes to the next row in that iteration. For that, we can use the in increase variable, put it at the end within that loop. And I point to that variable, which is our row index, and I increase it by one. Next, we have to change the column and also, of course, the column from our data table. So the next one would be B, obviously. And here we have uh, four, it's the fifth column. All right, so once this is done, we can then close the Excel again. Let's go to the Excel actions and close Excel. And this time we can also save that Excel or just uh, if you would like to debug only, do not save that, but let's save that with the same name. And then we would like to go back to uh, activate again the browser window of our SAP automation so we see what's happening here. And this we will can we can do once uh, this has loaded here. Let's go back to main and make sure our Excel processing is also part of that. For that, let me copy and paste the run subflow action. Once the data is extracted, we write it to Excel. Okay, before we log off, I would like to have access to that window. So let's go back to our right product and I will put a breakpoint here. So the automation will start, uh, stop at this point and ask me to continue manually. So I have time to stop the uh, automation here and then to capture that window uh, for our focus window action. So let's uh, run this. Now it is writing the data to our Excel sheet. Okay, now we have hit the breakpoint, I guess. Let's go back to our automation. That's correct, so let me stop it here. And we get a focus window action. Okay, and then we can reference our uh, Google Chrome managed product window. All right, so let me actually close the uh, SAP demo system. And let me also remove the products from here and then we run it again. So this should then run now end to end. It should go to the logon sequence, then search for product, extract the product data, write it to Excel, and then logging off.
and we can try that whole thing from the console. So this will be faster from an execution perspective. Okay, so here we have our development. You can provide my different SAP credentials and a different supplier name. So we didn't have any error, otherwise the exception would have been written here, and we're also not returning anything, of course. So this concludes the SAP Automated uh, Special Series, uh, where we have looked at uh, the different SAP Automation Integration Options, uh, Process Advisor to identify business process bottlenecks and automation opportunities, going into API-based uh, SAP Automation through the SAP ERP Connector, then looking into Custom Connectors, the different RPA options we have for SAP GUI Automation, and last in that episode now today, we've uh, reviewed the SAP Fiori based web uh, automation capabilities we have available in Power Automate Desktop. Thank you.